Okay, so the average value of a function over an interval has to do with the integral. Now, um, you have to be very careful to look at the phrasing because we also have average rate of change. Average rate of change, you should think slope. Average value, you got to think uh, integral, okay? So very slight differences makes a big difference in your answer. Okay, so where this comes from is something called the mean value theorem for integrals. So we've already got our mean value theorem for derivatives. Remember that says the slope of the secant line is equal to the slope of the tangent line somewhere on that interval. Well, the mean value theorem says that if we have a continuous function, then the integral from a to b of the function is equal to f of c times b minus a. Now what that means, I know it looks weird, but what that means, the best way to illustrate it is with a picture. Okay, so we've got some random curve here, we've got this interval from a to b. We know that the interval from a to b is talking about all the area under the curve. Okay, so it's saying all the area under the curve is equal to, there's some c somewhere on this interval, now, I kind of don't like that they pick one where it's right in the middle. It's not always right in the middle. But there's some C on this interval where it's Y value times the width of the interval. Okay, it's Y value times the width of the interval. That's going to be another area. That area is equal to the area of the curve. Okay, so that's what the mean value here on sets. Um, that there's some C on this interval that we can find where we use its y values to hide the rectangle and the entire interval is the width, then that rectangle is going to have the same area as the area under the curve. So you can see with this one that obviously on the left side, the rectangle is above the curve. On the right side, the rectangle is below the curve, so those kind of balance each other out so that those two figures have the same area. So that's what the mean value theorem for integrals says. So a kind of uh, totally losing the word right at this moment. A derivation of that is uh, the average value. Okay, the average value. All it does is it manipulates that mean value theorem, and so it says that the average value f of c is equal to 1 over b minus a. We just moved that b minus a to this side with the interval. So 1 over b minus a, the width of your interval, times the integral from a to b is the average value of that function. Okay, so that is our average value definition. So they can ask you, most likely what's going to happen on the exam, they're not going to say just find the average value of this function. Most likely. More likely what they're going to do is they're going to ask you an application problem, which we'll get to those in a minute. But let's just start with a basic function here. If our function is 3x squared minus 2x and we're on the interval from 1 to 4, let's find the average value. So f of c is equal to 1 over 4 minus 1 times the integral from 1 to 4 of 3x squared minus 2x dx. Sometimes they'll put it in parentheses, just anyways, it's just a technicality to show that you're going to integrate both, both those pieces. Okay, so our average value is equal to one third of uh, x cubed minus x squared from one to four. So one third parentheses four cubed minus four squared minus parentheses one cubed minus one squared. So four cubed is sixty four, four squared is sixteen, one cubed minus one squared is zero. And 64 minus 16 is 48. 
and one third of 48 is 16. So the average value, the average y value of this function from 1 to 4 is 16. Obviously, at the beginning, it's less than that. At the end, it's greater than that. But the average of it, the average y value is 16. Now, you could also be asked, well, where does that value occur? Well, that is the average y value. f of c is 16, so you set your function equal to that value. 3x squared minus 2x is equal to 16, and you're solving for the x. c is an x value. C is the x value where the average value occurs. Uh, so it's a quadratic. I would love to factor it. 3x, x, 16 is 4 and 4. We need to use 8 and 2. Minus 8 plus 2, because that will give us minus 8 plus 6. So 3x minus 8 is equal to 0. x plus 2 is equal to 0. Uh, negative 2 is not within our interval. So our c value is 8 over 3. Okay. It occurs at 8 thirds, which is, what, 2 and a third? Okay. Let's look at an application problem. It says at different altitudes in the Earth's atmosphere, sound travels at different speeds because of what the elements that are, you know, present and we need the weight or the force of gravity and all that good stuff. It affects the speed of sound. So we have this fancy looking piecewise function. Usually we're used to piecewise function having two pieces. This one has five. It's talking about five different altitudes or five different levels of altitude in the atmosphere. Um, so we, this is the speed function. It wants to know what is the average speed of sound over the interval from zero to 80. So what we've got to do is we have to anti-differentiate those five pieces, plug in their limits, find the total area under the curve, and then we multiply by 1 over 80. Now, let's use our technology, please. Um, I need this group to do uh, the first piece, find the value of that interval from 0 to 11.5. I need uh, Y'all to do the second two pieces, 295 and the 3 fourths X. Um, and then the group back there, I need y'all to do the last two pieces. Find the values of those integrals, on those intervals. We are going to add all these numbers together. That is going to give us the total for the going to give us the total um, for all of these rates put together. Okay, and then that's the interval from 0 to 80. That is that. So then we're going to multiply that or slash divide by 80. And the average speed of sound is 308. And if we look at our graph, we can figure out where that occurs. It occurs in several places for this function is where um, it achieves the average speed of sound. So in that atmosphere, in that atmosphere, and in that atmosphere, it will equal the average speed of sound.